Hello everybody, welcome to week two of the Armor of God book study. I am so excited for you guys to be joining me today. We are on week two right now, so you should have hopefully read in your book um, week two, and it's day one through five. Um, if you did it, or if you don't have the book, you're welcome to follow along on this video, and I'm going to try to hit the highlights. I will tell y'all, <laughs> the last time I came here for week one, I had like almost two pages of notes to go over. Today it's uh, double that. <laughs> so there is no way I can go through everything. This week was so powerful to me. It was so helpful. I've had really a rough week. I don't know if you guys have. I have had a rough week and studying this really helped push me through and remind me of a lot of truth. So this week we are going through the belt of truth. So in this, of course, in this study, Armor of God, we're going through all of the different pieces of armor that we are supposed to put on daily. And um, this week we're talking about the belt of truth. So make sure that you are um, doing your workbooks. I know sometimes it's very tempting to just skim through it, read it really quick, do the actual things like write what she says to write, look up verses that she says. If you will follow that, you will get so much more out of it. There is no way I can go through every single thing on the videos. It would we'd be here for hours. So anyway, I sound bad. I'm just going to warn y'all. I have had a cold, so I'm going to try to do my best. But if you hear a lot of uh, deepness in my voice and I sneeze or I'll try to edit out anything crazy, but I'm pushing through today. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it because I have a lot of notes here. If you haven't joined us over on the Facebook page, definitely email me, send me a message, and let me know that you want to join our book study page on Facebook. It's a private group. I've been posting every day in there just like little snippets, and I really enjoy getting to talk to you guys more uh, casually over there. So we still have plenty of room. If you want to join us, just let me know. So we're going to be talking about the belts of truth today. And this is so important because what is the opposite of truth? Lies. And who is the master of all lies? The devil. And it's one of his key ways that he comes after us is with lies. Um, so he is the master of lies. He is the master of illusion. So what is illusion? I know we hear that like in terms of like magic tricks. <laughs> illusion is something that is deceiving and it produces a false or misleading impression of reality. Things may look true. So think about a magic trick. It may look like they made the, you know, bunny rabbit come out of the hat or whatever, but they really didn't. It's all a grand trick. And that is what is so scary sometimes when we talk about the devil is he is sneaky. He will make things look like truth. He will make you think that things are one way when they're not. And that's why we have to put on that belt of truth every day so that we stand firm against his lies. Um, so he can make you think that God doesn't mean exactly what he says. <laughs> He will make you think that God isn't with you, that when you're going through hard times, he will whisper things in your ear like, well, where is God? He doesn't care about you. He doesn't love you. How many have, how many have had that thought before? That is not true. A hundred percent not true. But sometimes our feelings get in the way and we can start to think that some of these lies, they seem true and we can be deceived. So in Ephesians 6, 14 is the verse of the Bible where they taught where it mentions the belt of truth. And it says, stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. So this, I really like that, that um, this book, Ephesians, Paul talks about the armor of God because in that day, they saw Roman soldiers walking around all the time. So so people would be very familiar with the different pieces of armor. And it's so cool how he put this word picture together through the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, back then, your the, it really wasn't a belt. It was more like a girdle. Um, it was not just like a thin little belt. It was a whole contraption. And one of the things it did is it protected their core. And you hear about your core being so important. 
I'm going through <laughs> TMI. I'm going through pelvic floor therapy right now from having babies and I'm having all this pain. And one of the things she talks, my therapist talks to me about is how important a strong core is because it holds the rest of your body together. And when you have a weak core, things happen that are not good. <laughs> so this piece of armor held their core together. It helped with them with balance, stability. It helped them have resistance to injury. It helped organize all of the other pieces of armor. All the other pieces of armor kind of stemmed off of this belt. Um, but this was like a key piece. It is the core support. So truth is our core support. That is essential backing that you need when you're in the midst of a spiritual war. Um, so like we said, the enemy's number one weapon against us is lies, deception, trickery, um, flat out lying to us. And so what can we combat that with? God's truth. So unless we know what's true and we really know it deep down in our core, we will fall victim to pray. So how do we put it on? How do we go around and put on this belt of truth? <laughs> How do we do it? Because, you know, you can say all day, like, oh, just stand up and put on the belt of truth. It is action. But she does give us like four ways to put on the belt of truth. And I'm going to go through them really quickly. Number one, you uphold and affirm the standard, the truth and boundaries set by God in scripture. You commit yourself to them and resolve to teach them to your family. Number two, you daily, repeatedly begin letting God help you align your decisions and responses, your attitudes and ambitions alongside his benchmark of truth. Number three, you continually learn about the character and the purposes of God, both by the Bible and from his spirit. Number four, you filter every circumstance personally and culturally through the prism of his word instead of leaning on your feelings, political correctness, and opinion of others. So. This is so important. Unless we know God's word and his character and we spend time with him, it is really easy to get swayed. So my husband knows if somebody came to him and said, Jessica said <laughs> she wants you to go pick up some steak and she's cooking steak for dinner. And then we're going to do like, we're going to go on like a, a football game hike. That's not even a thing. But if, if somebody was telling him all of these, we're going to go watch football and she, she really wants to eat some steak for dinner. And, and this was coming at him. He would know immediately. <laughs> That's not my wife. Like she would never say that. That's how we should be with God. We should know his character. We should know his personality. And so when the devil comes at us with, well, he really doesn't love you. We can say, no, the Bible says God is love. God has loved me. He has never left me. He has never forsaken me. I know his character. And we can stand firm because we know the truth. And one of the ways we put on the armor is we know him. We spend time with him. You need to spend time. The Bible, reading the Bible is amazing. That's God's word but also just spending time with him, learning about his character. I love to just sit down and list all the ways. If I'm feeling down, if I'm feeling defeated, one of the ways that really helps me is listing out all the ways God has met me where I needed him in the past, all the ways he's been faithful. And I can look at that list and go, you know what? If he's been faithful all my life, he is going to continue to be faithful. That is his character. That is his track record. So. The enemy is looking for any weakness in you, and he's looking for you to have a very weak core because he's going to exploit that. So some signs of a weak core, this is important for us to know, poor posture. So if you have poor posture, you're going to hurt your back. You're going to not be as strong. You're not going to be able to carry as much. You're going to be more injury prone like me going to pelvic floor therapy because my core is terrible and I've had babies and it's weakened my core. And now I'm having other pain and problems because I'm more injury prone. I don't have that strong core that's holding me together. And when we talk about injury prone as Christians, one of the big ways I think of it is like unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, all of those things, the devil wants to exploit those things in you. He wants you to harbor unforgiveness to the point where it turns to bitterness because if he can get you looking at that and letting that fester, he has you. 
Unforgiveness is a huge trap in the church, in Christianity, um, of course, even outside of Christianity. Uh, unforgiveness will ruin your life. And all of us have been hurt by people that we did not deserve, how they treated us. But you have to forgive for you. You have to let God heal that for you. The other person may not even know that you're hurt, or they might know, but you still need to forgive them because the Bible says if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. And I know we've all messed up. Um, I also like to think of it like this. If I hold on to bitterness and I hold on to unforgiveness, then God can't intervene and fight for me. I have to lay that down so he can fight for me. And I promise you, you'd rather have him fight for you than you sitting around miserable and bitter. <laughs> so when you have a weak core, it is very easy to get offended, to get angry, to get hurt, and that will ruin your life. And so I'm just praying that if anybody out there is listening to this and you have unforgiveness against anyone in your life and, you know, there are things that happen to us that it feels impossible to forgive. But like I said, you're not doing it for the other person as much as you're doing it for you. And you have to allow God to fight for you. That doesn't mean that we continue to let people hurt us and continue to stay in relationships that don't be, you know, benefit us. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, I'm not saying that we justify every single behavior that other people do and we become a doormat. But we do have to forgive because once bitterness takes over, it's a whole, it, it, it's just a slippery slope. Um, anger itself isn't a sin. It's what you do with the anger. Even Jesus got angry, but he didn't let it fester and build up and make him angry at God um, or angry at God's children. Everybody on this planet is a child of God. And if you could look at other people like that, like, God created these people. God loves these people. It really helps me to think of it like that. I'm sorry, it's getting dark in here. The clouds, the clouds have come. Um, also, it's easy to get fatigued. When you have a weak core, you are going to get fatigued faster. When the body isn't well supported, it is unable to supply the level of strength you need for the other movements. Um, so it stabilizes. This belt will stabilize the shield of faith. It will sell it, stabilize the helmet of salvation, the shoes of peace. You can't have peace in your life if you don't know God's truth. You can't have faith in your life if you don't know God's truth. You can't have salvation in your life if you don't know the truth. He, truth <laughs> is crucial to every other part of the armor. And I think that's why it comes first. You know, we talked about prayer last week truth is right behind it. And it's the actual first piece of armor we're talking about. It is so important to understand the truth so that the other pieces of armor come in place. Um, without the belt, you're left trying to carry all of this armor. There's nothing to hold it together. So you're running around fighting battles and you're trying to hold it in your own strength as opposed to letting your core take up some of that weight. And also the belt gives us freedom of movement because our hands aren't tied. We have the support. And, you know, a lot of times we can think of God's like being a Christian and, and all the stuff, like all the rules we have to follow. We can become really legalistic about it. Freedom in Christ is not about legalism. Um, you know, we do have a, a, a list of of things that God wants for our life. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to have faith. He wants us to have all of these things. He wants us to live a holy lifestyle, but he doesn't want us to be legalistic about it. Legalism is putting task and law above our relationship with God. But truth are guidelines that allow us to live a life of abundance. Once you fully lit once you fully lay your life down for Christ and you give him everything, then you become truly free. And I know that sounds like an oxymoron or something, but it's so true. When we surrender everything to God, our life becomes more free. So I really like what she said about discernment. This is one of my top gifts that I feel like God has given me. And I think everybody can also have this. 
And it's something I pray continually that God helps me with is discernment. I think a lot of women have discernment. You know, you just get like a little feeling against like, a, you know, when you meet someone, you may have a little feeling like this seems weird. <laughs> That's discernment. But discernment is not a matter of just telling the difference between right and wrong. And lots of people can do that, like the difference of right and wrong. But discernment is seeing the difference between right and almost right. So the devil is really good about just almost, like it's almost right, but it's not quite right. He likes to do that because he's tricky. But how do we deceive? How do we see his deceptions? We turn on the light. The truth is the light. When you have a dark room, <laughs> there could be a lot of things going on in there. But as soon as you turn on the light, you see immediately what's going on. The light exposes the darkness. You can't argue with something that's in the light. Everyone can see it. If you have a blue shirt and you put it in a dark room, you're not going to be able to see it. But once you turn on that light, everybody can see the color of that shirt. And it's the same with this with the devil's lies. When you hold it up to God's light, it is easy to see the darkness. Our feelings can change. Our emotions can change. One day we can feel happy. We can feel sad. We can be mad. The one thing that doesn't change is God's truth. It, it doesn't change no matter if you're having a hard day, a sad day, a mad day. Um, truth is constant. And in the soldiers' times where, you know, the Roman soldiers, the belt is what marked them as soldiers. When they saw these girded soldiers, they immediately knew who they were. And the truth belt, the belt of truth that we wear immediately marks us as God's people, God's army. We should always have it with us. Always. Like think of um, the Garden of Eden. These people, Adam and Eve, they walked with God. They knew him. They walked with him daily in the cool of the night, the cool of the day. They knew him. But all it took was Satan coming at them with a deception saying, oh, you know, you, you can eat this tree. You can eat the fruit off of this tree. You won't become, you won't die. Like God said, oh, no, you'll become more like him. And they loved God. They wanted to be more like him. Um, but he deceived them and, um, it spreads. Not only did Eve eat the fruit, but then she gave some to Adam. He drew Eve's attention away with God said they could eat all the fruit in the garden, all of it, except for one tree. Satan showed them the one tree that he took away. He drew Eve's attention to what she couldn't have, tricking her to ignore all the abundance God said she could have. Um, and if she had remembered what God said and trusted his truth and not fallen for the scheme of the devil, I mean, things would have been a lot different. The truth is so important. It is protecting of us. It strengthens us. It holds other things together. Tell me in the comments, like what you, what stood out to you the most, because like I said, I'm just hitting the highlights here and I would love to know what really spoke to you. And I just pray as you go on throughout this week, no matter what comes up, I had a rough week with my kids being sick or my little baby being sick, and then I got sick. They had a little bit of a rough week at school. The enemy definitely tried to distract me, especially because I was tired. <laughs> and, you know, I got some whispers in my ear, and I felt like, well, where is God in this? Because I'm really struggling. But when I reminded myself, no, God has been faithful. He has never let us down. He has always been through it. Even when I've gone through hard things, he's been right there beside me and he's not going to change. And I would remind myself of all the things he's done for me. Read the scriptures on that God is a healer. God is always with us when we go through the fire, when we go through deep waters, he is with us. You know, we don't, we aren't promised a perfect, easy life as Christians. We're not. Um, bad things happen because we're on earth and we are not in heaven right now. But we are promised that he goes with us. And so if we can remember that, we have the God of the universe on our side, living inside of us. We never go through something that he's not there. And if we can tap into that and not listen to the devil's lies that say, where is God? He's not with you. He doesn't care about you. I feel like God, the devil uses that one a lot. He doesn't care about you. Where is he? Why is he letting these things happen to you? He loves to use that one. But again, we hold it up to the truth, what the Bible says, his character, and it 
pales in comparison. It's easy to see. That's just a flat out lie. Um, the devil wants to destroy your life. And he will if you give him a, a weak core that he can take advantage of. I'm going to pray for you guys and we're going to sign off here. I know this video is getting long. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for my friends that are watching this, God. Thank you so much for this study that allows us to study all together your truths and learn more about you. God, I just pray for this week as we go through our day, um, that you would just help us remember to put on the belt of truth, that we would read your word, that we would spend time with you and we would learn your character, God, and that you would just be with us and you would help us to know that you're there. I just pray for this study as we continue to learn about the different pieces of armor, that we have the courage to daily put them on because we are at at war with the enemy and it's a real war. God, I just pray for all my friends. I just pray that you would strengthen them. You would let them know how much you love them until we meet together soon. In Jesus name. Amen. All right, you guys. So that is the belts of truth. Definitely leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this week. Um, next week, I don't have my book right here. I think it's the breastplate of righteousness, I believe. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about that. Make sure you do day one through five and, um, we'll go through it next week. So if you like the video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, leave me a comment and subscribe. If you're new, we'll see y'all tomorrow on the channel and next week for Sunday chat. Bye.